Okay, everyone, and welcome uh, everyone that could join us. Thank you so much. And, and with me is Ms. Boom, parent coordinator. Good evening. And Ms. Kleiger, uh, community school director. Okay. So a lot has changed since last we met. But it'll be okay because uh, we'll get through it. Okay. So just a reminder to everybody about the in-person student model. If you chose blended, meaning you do in-person and remote, you're either in group A or group B. And we pretty much have contacted, I think, everybody. But again, there'll be some people that fall through the cracks, but we'll get to you. And group D, if you chose full remote learning, you are group D and you don't need to do anything else. So, some updates. All the student IS-238 email accounts are working. All the student IS-238 email accounts are working. The students cannot access any of the Google Classrooms because school has not started yet. The students cannot access any of the Google Classrooms because school has not started yet. Is that what I sound like? If you want 100% remote learning, you must complete the learning preference survey. So you have to I have go a question. to the school website. I have a question. I have a question. Okay. If you want 100%. Oh, I see. We had somebody who wasn't muted. Okay. My apologies. Okay, so if you want 100% remote learning, you go to the school website. I'm going to click the school website right here. And that's is238.com. Now, learning preference survey. If you didn't fill this out, you need to fill it out now if you want remote learning. You can't drop a line to an email. You can't say, I want this. The DOE needs a record of this. And this is a centrally uh, created survey. So you click that link and you fill it out. Okay? www.is23.com. And also, again, this website has a lot of information. But I know a lot of people are not visiting it. So please go there and check it out. A lot of the answers to your questions will be found there, just like the announcement about tonight's meeting. Okay? All right. It's too late to choose blended learning, which is in person. You will be able to switch in November. We have not gotten a date yet. But it's too late now for you to say, I want to send my child to school, and I'm sorry. But we do have to program, and we have programmed already. So here are the changes, the big ones. School now begins on September 16th remotely for everyone. Okay. Blended learning which is the in-person, will begin on September 22nd. Oops. Now, again, let's just go back. I had to change the calendar that I put up, and I'm going to put the new one up on the website. So, now, again, let's just go back. I had to change the calendar that I put up, and I'm going to put the new one up on the website. Got him. Good. Okay. 
September 16th, remote learning starts for everyone, even if you're going in person. Everybody starts the 16th at home, remote learning. And for those three days, we'll get everybody ready and start testing out things so they understand what's going on. Okay? On Monday, we start Group A. Okay? Now, here's where people are going to say, hey, wait a minute, why is Group A two days in a row? Because remember, we alternate each week. But the following week, I'm sorry, there is no school on Monday. So Group B will not start that Monday. Okay? Good morning. Good morning. It's great to say I'll say good morning. Good morning. Okay, someone's funny. I get it. <laughs> and, but the days that never change are Group A comes in on Tuesday and Thursday, and Group B comes in on Wednesday and Friday. The only date that ever changes is the Monday. One week it's Group A, one week it's Group B. Okay. And this will be put up on the website afterwards as the new calendar. Okay. Programs will be available on the NYC schools account. If you need an NY schools account creation code letter, you can email Ms. Boone, our parent coordinator, and there's her email address, or Mr. Habibi, and there's his email address, okay? Now, I know that Ms. Boone is the most popular person in all of IS-238 and beyond. So I'm going to tell you something. You might want to say, I'm going to email Mr. Habibi because maybe not many people are emailing him and I'll get a quicker response. Because if we all email Ms. Boone, it's going to take her some time. So it's just like if you got on a line, if the line to the right is shorter, go to that line. You can still wave to Ms. Boone on the other line and she will still love you, but it's okay. <laughs> The New York City Schools account is replacing Pupil Path. You will no longer have Pupil Path, and you must use your NY Schools account email to communicate with school staff. And this is really for security purposes. Okay. It's not really a good idea for us to respond to emails from email accounts that we don't even know the name and give out student information. It's really not uh, the way we want to do business. And some of you know that I have said I would not send you things uh, because you might have had an email address that um, wasn't even your name or you said I'm um, emailing for somebody. It, we can't do that. Okay. So let me just recap again. You do not need to send everybody emails saying, my Google Classroom doesn't work. It doesn't work because we haven't started school. I know you're very anxious, but school hasn't started yet. So that's why you can't access it. Okay. Think of it this way now. Google Classroom? is like a real classroom. So I wouldn't let you walk into the building three days before school starts and sit in an empty room, would I? No, I wouldn't. So that's why you can't access it because there's nobody there, okay? It's, it's, not, a, it's not a defect. It's not that anybody's um, hiding anything. It's just school hasn't started yet. Okay, and again, the school website, 
Let's go there one more time. If you want 100% remote learning, you need to click this and fill out the information. Okay. If you do not have a New York uh, NYC schools account, you need to get one. And the information is here. If you go there, you may already have an account you forgot. So check here first. You may not have activated your child's account. Okay. So you would go here first and click that information. If nothing happens, then you know you can ask Miss Boone or Mr. Habibi and they will help you. And now that we are getting closer to the start of school, I will create a special section up here to keep the information a little easier to find. Okay, and just one more time again, I want to explain. Mondays or when we switch group A and group B. Okay, and I will post one of these calendars every month to make sure everybody knows where they're supposed to be. And again, I cannot stress enough the need for the NYC schools account. Okay. okay. Now this would be, I guess, the time we could take some questions or do we already have some questions or? Mr. Letty, someone did, uh, did ask a question about the September 16th to the 18th. Is that remote learning for everybody? It is remote learning for everyone. Nobody will be in the building um, until the following week. Now, I also want to make everybody understand everyone. Is, yes, hold on one minute. Everyone will be doing remote learning. Okay, some people will do a full remote learning and then other people will do blended, which is they come in to school and then one day they do remote learning. So remember that everybody's always got a remote learning part. Okay. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we can take some questions now. Yes, I would like to ask one. There's one parent that. Okay. Okay. Um, my question is, my child is going to school for the first time uh, as a sixth grader, but I have gotten no information if she's in group A or group B. No one has called me. No one has contacted me. No letter. No nothing. So, I'm confused. Okay. Have you have you gone to the school website? Yes, I have. Okay, have you emailed any of the people to, to, no, to let us know? Because here's the problem. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to, to email Miss Boone your name and contact information. Mm -hmm. And then we will get you that information. Unfortunately, the problem being students that moved from fifth grade to sixth grade, a lot of the contact information was never updated. So I made phone calls and I have people making phone calls, but since we've never met anybody and you've never submitted any paperwork to us, a lot of the numbers are disconnected. A lot of the numbers, no answer, or it's a wrong number. So I understand your frustration, but we have been making it available for people to reach out to us in some way. So if you email Ms. Boone or Mr. Habibi, we will definitely get you that information uh, tomorrow, okay? Okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome. I can actually send it to her tonight, so I'm putting my email in the chat. Okay, very good. Okay, were there any other questions, Ms. Collier? Yeah, there's a, a few questions here. Um, the first one is, um, I have applied for an iPad for my child. When will I be able to know if one will be available for her? 
Uh, unfortunately, they will contact you directly when you applied for it. So, and I, I, I don't like to give answers like that, but that's not um, our area. I will tell you though, in the event they don't get in touch with you when school starts, you know, we will reach out and, and try to get you something from the school if we had. But they do have a lot of orders and I was told that they will get these uh, electronic devices to the parents before school starts. Now remember again, I understand everybody's anxious, but um, that's probably one of the reasons they actually moved the start date back a little between you and me, that that might have been one of the reasons uh, also to make sure that they had all the devices ready. Another question is asking, uh, when will programs be available on NYC Schools account? Okay, I'm glad somebody asked that. So. The program was completed uh, today, actually. And that will probably pop up on the school's account uh, at some point in the either, I don't know if it's there tonight, it might not be, it usually takes about 24 hours, 48 hours. But I will tell everyone, again, if you log in and you see it and there's errors, there may be errors and we will fix it. But the point is, at this stage, we wanted to make sure that we had programs, teachers, students in classes, because most of the time, probably 85% of the students won't need uh, any changes done. Now, some people may say, well, 85%, that's not really that high. It's actually pretty good for the school our size. Most of the time, the areas we need to tweak and, and correct is if sometimes students are English language learners and we didn't know they were. Um, students that maybe had an IEP and we weren't, from, that we weren't advised of the changes. So they're not long fixes, but it's better to have a program than to have nothing. So it'll be up there. And again, if you have the questions, you can always contact and then we'll take care of it. The next question is, are the remote learning students going to get any off for holidays, any time off for holidays? <laughs> every, every day is a holiday. No, um, no, um, not every day is a holiday. In my, you know what, in my mind, I think every day is a holiday. I appreciate every day. But yes, you will have the same days off as uh, the regular students. The holidays are still going to be the holidays unless Unless somebody uh, in authority way above me decides that uh, we, they don't have that holiday. And the only reason I say that is you do remember in April, they took away the spring break. But if we're off from school, you're off from remote learning. But you're never really off from learning. So I'll just tell you that. <laughs> the next question is, uh, is remote learning going to be pre-recorded videos or live sessions? there will be a combination of things. We definitely heard parents uh, were not satisfied with the way things were rolled out. I agree. And um, that, that has been addressed. Teachers now, there, is, there has to be a certain amount of live instruction that students will get and we will definitely monitor that. However, I also need people to understand something about education in general. I understand the importance of live instruction, but don't confuse live instruction as just a teacher talking like I'm doing right now. Live instruction can also be the teacher present while students are working and they answer questions for them or they, or they give some coaching to the students or their assistants. It's not always the teacher talking. And on the other end, independent learning is also a way uh, for students to improve. It's what I like to call productive struggle. If I always give you the answer, you're never going to learn how to do it yourself. Now that's not me saying we're not having live instruction, but just because you see your child working alone on something doesn't mean the teacher's not doing their job, okay? If you see that your child's doing that all week, yeah, then let me know, but um, that should not happen. And we're gonna try to our best to make sure it doesn't because we do 
um, want that. We're even going to have office hours for teachers, 20 minutes a day, where they can reach out and speak to parents or students that work on that. And, and, as a matter, and also, I'm going to try to get some um, remote tutoring. And that would be available to all students. I want to see if I can get some teachers maybe that would be available to give like homework help or something like that, like five, six, seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, something like that. But we'll get more information once we start. The next question is, do you need an NYC schools account for both parent and child or is it just one account? You have the option. Um, it, you, some parents, they get the two letters depending on how you filled out your information of who the guardians are. So some families have two or three letters. Some families have one. It's up to the family uh, who wants, they don't necessarily have to have it, but the person who has it will be then the one who communicates. The students need it as well. The students need that account as well. And the parent is the one who activates the school account for the child. Okay, there you, once you make your account, you have to activate your child's account. So it all comes down to your own preference. If we have two parents that don't live together, maybe each parent wants their own account, which they, they did give the, uh, if they have that access, then that's fine. But if it's just the one parent that wants to deal with it, it's, it's totally up to the parent. Yes, Ms. Boone, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that there are some, when, when we generate the letter from DOE, it's either two parents that are listed or two guardians that are listed or the one. So I cannot make that happen. I have been asked to do so. Um, I cannot do that. As you said, it's generated from DOE. And also, if parents have forgotten the email that they used when they uh, signed up for NYC account, they give me their... Oh no, OSIS or student ID, well, OSIS student ID number, and it will show you the email that was actually used. So I will give that to them. Okay, yes. Again, I, I get, trust me, I understand um, the frustration people are feeling. And I know a lot of you, here, here's the situation here. Everyone who is here and everybody who's watching is somebody that is very concerned about their child's education. That's why you're here. Okay, so then you're kind of similar to me. You want to make sure that everything is set up and you don't want to wait to the last minute. I understand that. However, school doesn't start until two weeks from now and everybody's trying to get their things started. So I'm, I'm very confident we're going to get you all the information you would need. Before, before the time comes, it's not going to be this minute uh, exact. Some people have gotten their stuff, some people haven't, but you will get it. And I do understand that uh, you're worried about it. And again, the other thing I'm going to stress, as we begin school, because here's the other thing I need everybody to understand. The two ladies that are on my side or either side, Ms. Boone and Ms. Kleiger, nobody's back to work yet except us and then some of the assistant principals, and they're the ones doing all this other work that needs to be done. So it's not like schools have their entire staff back. So it's only a few people. So that's why when we start back to school, things will be moving even quicker because there'll be more people working, okay? And once we do get back to school, I'm going to put something out to ask parents to update any of their information because when Ms. Boone even brought up the fact whose name uh, is on a letter that gets generated, that comes from the information you gave, whether it was when you entered our school for the first time or you entered school in kindergarten with your children and you, and you never updated it. That's what that is. You have to really, if you change a phone number, the first call should be the school to say, listen, I changed my phone number. That's, that's really... <clears throat> excuse me, very important. Okay, things like that we, we definitely need to know. And that way you'll always be in the loop. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, there's another question about um, teachers. So it says, will it be different sets of teachers for the days the students are doing remote learning and the days that they are going in person? Yes and no. <laughs> okay, so 
that that is going to be that this is why things take a little time because now i'm not one for excuses however we did not get the information of how teachers would be working this year until thursday of last week now it is one week ago from that and we actually have a program um and i and i'm going to um i'm going to say something very nice about mr galis the assistant principal who did it right now hopefully i won't have to turn around and take that back later on but he did work very hard at that with given what he had so right now you will have you will have the in-person teacher if you're doing blended and then he will have a teacher who will help with the remote but they'll be working together Okay, so when your child is doing in person, there is another teacher that will help your child remote. That's how we have it set up right now. That could change, but it all comes down to how many teachers we have available. Okay. So there's um, a question about the calendar. What's the calendar for the remote learning schedule? Oh, group, it's every day. Every day is remote learning. Every day is, if you are 100% remote learning, then you, are, then you are in school in your house. So every day that there's school, you are in school. But we will, but we will once school starts. That's when we'll put together that schedule for when live instruction will be given. So then that way you have to make sure that your child is in front of their computer when that is happening. But we're, we're going to let you know all of that uh, once things get started. How are incoming sixth graders getting their class schedule and teachers? Is there a special code for the first day in class? Every, the programs will be generated through NYC schools uh, accounts. And then we will email all the students all that information. That's why it's very important you have those accounts. Your children will also get a um, Gmail account for the school to use with the Google Classroom. But that's why, that's why it's very important with the sixth grade to have that NYC schools account. And um, I'm hoping that last year in the fifth grade, they, they really made sure that those were created because that's the easiest way. There's a, another a parent that's asking again how to um, choose their son to be in uh, remote learning, where to go to sign up for remote learning. Uh, go to the school website. You go to the school website and it's right when you open the school website, there's the learning preference survey there. Uh, if I choose to switch back to blended learning in November, how, can, how will I know which classroom I have to go and which group am I in? Well, <laughs> when, when you make that decision in November is when we would tell you, um, um, you know, that we'll let you know. I, and again, I get your, you're worried about these things, but when that decision is made, then, then we'll definitely tell you. And by that time, I mean, I would think the communication would be um, outstanding of what we're doing with everybody. So that wouldn't even be an issue. That would just be a quick email, most likely. How can I get an application to apply to a specialized high school? Ah, I know, yes. So have you heard anything, Ms. Boone? <laughs> About specialized high school? Because I have it. I think she froze. Oh, wait, there. No, okay. Unfortunately, at this time, there have there has not been any information regarding that. Okay, um, and I'm not going to speculate because that's how I get myself into trouble. But it's it's they haven't said anything yet. That's all I can tell you. I don't know how they're going to do that. But um, the minute the minute you uh, we get the information, uh, we'll get it out to you, and it'll probably get go through the NYC schools account first. If I if I had to guess, it would come centrally. But we'll let you know. But right now, there is no information on specialized high schools. 
uh, the next question is, so the school will start September 22nd. Well, no, actually it should be the 21st for blended learning. And is it final? I think they're asking if that date, that start date is the final set date. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Uh, every day I wake up, I expect a new challenge. I am hoping that is. I was hoping, I will tell you right now, I was hoping for September 10th. And I know there was a lot of fighting and a lot of things back and forth in the media, but I really was hoping we would start September 10th for the in-person part. So right now, uh, uh, it's September 21st is the first uh, group A comes in and then they also come in the 22nd. Group B's first day of in-person will be the 23rd. But right now that's, that's what I have and I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed and I'm hoping that's what it is. But I, I, there's no way I could even tell you with any real authority. The next question is about um, September 16th, when everyone goes remote, what website should we log into and where do we get the passwords to log into those websites? Oh, um, we, most of, so every seventh and eighth grader already has their school Gmail account. So that's going to be emailed to them. That's not going to be a problem. It's very important that the sixth graders have their NYC schools account because we will email that account. We will also make phone calls and put stuff on the website with information if you didn't get the information and then how we can get it to you. So we will definitely get it to you. Um, if you're not already logged with uh, stuff already, it'll just take a little longer, but that's why it's very important because the the best way we can communicate with people is through the, the email. And the best way to have a secure email is either is the NYC schools account email, which I think is uh, nycstudents.net yeah. or the Google email, which is the school email. And all the seventh and eighth graders already have that. And we are create, we did create email accounts for the sixth graders as well. And we will send those out um, through the, the NYC with all the codes and, and every, everything else. The next question says, how many subjects will be given to remote learning? My son is an incoming sixth grader. What are the supplies needed for sixth grade? Uh, the supply list is on the website uh, and it's very little. Uh, it's, it's, it's very little. Uh, the, you know what? Hold on a second. It's on the website and the social media pages as well. Yes. Definitely check out the, here we go. Definitely check out the social media pages. And guess what? If you go to the school website, you can get the links for them up here. Yeah. Okay. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, okay? Um, I'm not going to click either one of these because I don't know who's been using this computer and I don't want to get an Instagram that's just about my cat and people are going to say things <laughs> about my cat. So <laughs> you don't want to take the chance that that's my cat's Instagram page and, and deal with that. But the links are right up here. Um, oh, whatever. No, 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 we should Okay, <laughs> so... Over here, down, scroll down, school supply list. And I'm going to click it. And if you see, we're not asking you to get much because we're really moving away from paper and pen. In your house and with the school, yeah, you might need, you'll need a pen and notebook if you want to figure something out or write scrap or help you solve a problem, most definitely but there isn't a requirement of we're checking notebooks. Everything is going to have to be done digitally. It's, it's really the only way to do it. Now, what I am saying for students who physically come to school is that they should, um, you know, buy like, you know, these little packets with the small pocket tissues 
and maybe a small hand sanitizer. Will we have these at the school? Absolutely. But it's if you're on the bus or you're coming to school and you need a tissue or maybe you don't want to get up and use the hand sanitizer in the classroom or the tissue, you have your own, you know, and we're trying to keep it so everybody is safe and everybody feels uh, secure. So you have your own little hand sanitizer if you want it. Now, the other thing I'm suggesting is a personal headset. They're not that expensive. You can get one for about eight bucks. Um, a lot of your children who maybe uh, Xbox, PSP, their gaming systems, they might have those big ones, the bows or the beats, and they got the little microphone and they play like Halo or Call of Duty or something like that. Um, that's the same thing. And the reason I suggest that is because if you're in the house with your other family members, it cuts down on the noise. It helps the child focus because they're hearing it right there. And they don't have to talk as loud as I'm talking right now because we just assume we need to talk that loud because there's nobody here. So I, I should be wearing one of them. And, and um, as soon as I find mine, I'm gonna start wearing mine. But it's a, it's a better way for them to do, uh, do this kind of video conferencing. And they're, they're not too expensive. I've seen them as low as seven, $8. Uh, and then, the, you know, the, the more you want, the, the more little gimmicks and gadgets, um, they probably get more expensive. The only thing I will tell you is make sure if you buy one that it can plug into whatever device you're using. Because remember, iPads are, um, Apple has different things that you plug in. So just make sure you're getting the one that works with what you have. And again, when, when, when you see up here, personal use only, personal use only. This is not for the class. I am not asking parents to bring in anything for the entire class. I know that it has been done in the past. I'm not a fan of it. Um, I don't think teach, uh, 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 parents should be supplying a, a year's worth of tissues and things like that. So if any teacher sends you an email that you need to bring this in, you let me know right away because I've told them that's not how I'm doing this. This is just a suggestion that I think is a, a good idea to have because you never know when you might need it and that. But every classroom will has, will is getting, um, you know, the, the hand sanitizer thing, you the um, dispenser, yeah. you know, like you, you're seeing a thing. Every classroom is going to have one of those inside that will be filled and monitored by the custodians every day. They're putting them up right now, actually. So, and I, I buy tissues all the time. We'll have tissues, so you don't have to worry about that. But I think it's nice if the child has it themselves. So that way, if they, if they don't feel like getting up or something like that. Okay, the next question is, um, can you please make a bell schedule? Well, we, we, we're, here's the thing with that. We're going to have a bell schedule, but it's, it's, not going to, it's not going to be the same as what everybody was used to. Because now remember, we're talking about children that are in school. Students will be in school from 8.30 to two o'clock, okay? And that's only two days a week maybe three, depending on the week, but so it's not every day. So we have to change the way we do things. And we have other things we have to fit in. And the students are going to be in the same class for the whole day. So we're looking at ways to break up the day a little. So the students aren't getting tired and, um, you know, antsy or, you know, uh, getting a little restless and the teachers aren't getting restless. So we'll have sort of a bell schedule, like people will know what they're doing, but it'll be, it'll be a little different because we're going to have to fit things in like phys ed and art and music. We still want to give these things. We may not be able to give them in the same amount of time that we used to, but we're still going to give it because it, 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 it helps 
it helps change up the day a little. So you will have a sort of schedule, uh, but but it but we're not necessarily going to have it down. Like the bells won't be on. We won't have the bells on anymore because it it just it'll be more of a thing. Because remember, the teachers have to move, not the students. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to do it in a way that's um, I don't want to say relaxed. It's not going to be relaxed, but it's just not going to be. Uh, uh, you know, like go. It's 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 going to be a little different. There's a question here asking about the lockers. Will locks be cut with stuff removed? Uh, no, I have told Mr. Fitzgerald to leave the locks. The problem is students have contacted us wanting to get the stuff out, but they don't remember their locker number or their combination. Um, so. For the students that, for the seventh and eighth graders that are coming in person, you know, we'll we'll figure it out about like, oh, this was my locker. We can go over there and we could take care of it. But none of the locks were clipped, uh, and they won't be clipped until I can make sure that uh, people have their stuff. If a student says, "Listen, I don't remember the combination, or I lost the key," then we'll clip the lock. There's a follow-up question here about the bell schedule for the days that a student's at home working remotely. They're yes. requesting a schedule for that. Yeah, there will be a schedule of that because that will that will schedule when the live instruction is. So you will get something. So remote learning will actually be a little more uh, formalized than in-person learning. So uh, we're switching it up on everybody. So instead of just hanging out at home and that idea of like, well, I'm home, that's going to actually be a little more structured because of the fact that we have to make sure that when the teacher is doing live, the time they're doing it, and that you know when they're doing it so you're there. So then you're not watching videos all the time and then you're there live with the teacher. So remote learning basically almost will have a bell schedule. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, ring your phone with the bell and tell you it's time to, <laughs> time to go to ELA. No, I should have said that because now people are going to ask me to do it. Uh, but that, that'll be, there'll be a definite schedule for remote learning. Uh, there's a clarifying question about getting the Google Classroom codes. Uh, are they going to get the classroom codes through the NYC school account Gmail or the school's Gmail? They're, we're going to do both. We're going to do both. And um, okay, if you if you look, if your group A does, I'm sorry, I can't really understand what this, Ms. Deport, do you want to talk, speak, or is that a, answering a question? I don't know if she can. Um, Hi, it's from a parent. She was looking at the calendar. She sees that. Group A has more dates and then group B. So can you clarify on that, Mr. Levy? You mean for September? Yes. Yeah, it has one more, it has one day more because they're off on on the holiday. I think she was just making sure is it gonna be like that every month or is it no 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 it's going to be uh hold on. Oh, wait, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, sorry, I forgot to share the thing. Um, Is that it? Yeah, okay. So if you look back there, every Tuesday and Thursday is group A every Wednesday and Friday is group B. These will always be the same. Monday will change uh, and we're starting with group A, but what happens is the following week, there's no school. So group B misses out that week. But when we go back the next month in October, group B will start that Monday. Okay, does that make sense to her maybe? So the, the Monday will yeah. always alternate. And if we, um, where did I go? 
here I am. The Monday, I'm sorry, I lost myself on here. The Monday will always alternate between group A and B. Because here's the other problem. The DOE hasn't issued the school calendar yet. Um, and I, I don't want to start saying there's no school on days if they start taking days away or something. Uh, so I don't want to get into that. But once they release the calendar, you know, if we have to do a thing where group B is not getting the days, we'll, we'll make an adjustment. But, but as of right now, um, I'm just, I just don't want to start putting out more things and then I got to bring them back and change it. I'm, I'm upset that we had to change the calendar when they changed the date because I know it's going to confuse people. And, and um, you know, there's, there's over communicating and then there's confusing uh, people, you know, and I know they want us to over communicate, but I don't want to do it that the extent that people are like, well, I have no idea what's going on now. Mm -hmm. So that's how it's going to be. The, the group A is always Tuesday, Thursday. Group B is always Wednesday, Friday. The, Mon the Mondays will alternate, but if once we get the calendar, it looks like Group B or Group A is not getting enough days, we'll let everybody know before that, you know, we're going to do this Monday is going to be a Group B again or something like that. But we'll let you know um, weeks, weeks before. Because remember, snow days could happen. All sorts of things could happen. Mm -hmm. And you'll be putting up a monthly calendar as soon as you have that. Yeah. I very yeah. much will, Miss Khan. I know that's got to be Miss Khan asking the question. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I definitely um, will. She has one more question. The kids sure. that does school buses, will they be picked up by the first day? Also, how will this work out for them? I didn't, I didn't hear all that. Okay, the kids that does school buses, Will they be picked up by the first day? Also, how will they work out for them? How will it work out for them? Okay, this is for the so, kids that get picked up by the school bus. Um, when busing is figured out, which I, I have not received any communication that they have um, finalized the bus scheduling. Again, um, I apologize. It's, it's not something I can actually control. I wish it could. Uh, so I don't know. But the, the bus scheduling, there will have to be direct communication between the schools and the, the grouping they have. And, and that's something that was actually, well, actually something I brought up at a meeting this morning where I said, um, you know, OPT uh, run the Office of Pupil Transportation I basically was saying at this point, someone from OPT needs to almost be like my cousin that I talk to a couple of times a week because it can't just be you go in and put something in an email or on a survey and they get back to you. Because if, I, if I'm telling them, listen, uh, in two weeks, I have to move group B to this Monday, then I need the busing for the kids who were maybe in group B. So I, we're going to definitely be on top of that, but they have not, they have not um, given us the schedule yet for OPT. And for that, I am sorry. Uh, another question about transportation is asking, will Metro cards be provided? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, they will be. I know the, the, the MTA went back to, to full fares. Did they start that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. okay. So um, what would be great if they just let everybody under 18 ride for free, then we wouldn't have to worry about it. But uh, they definitely have to give us Metro cars. That's, um, that's state law. Mm -hmm. That's that's the law. If children are, uh, transportation must be provided if needed. So they will get them when? That I, uh, that I can't really tell you. Remember, they're going to have to give stuff like that because for remote learning students that are home, that maybe need to go get uh, breakfast or lunch uh, at, at the school or at a school closest, I mean, you know, they could have to travel or something like that. I'm not seeing any more questions. Um, Ms. Deport, did you get any more questions message to you? 
Mr. Port, did you say no? No, no question. Okay. So I'm not, uh, one more came in. When do we have to apply for high schools and how will we be doing it? Question. Uh, well, I will tell you this though, as opposed, different from the specialized high school, because that's a test. Applying to high school will probably be the same thing because technically uh, two years ago, everyone was supposed to apply for the high school online. Um, it was a quick rollout and a lot of our parents had a, a, a problem with it. And we would do Miss Mancuso, Miss Robles, Mr. Mancion would help parents do the, uh, they would do a paper application and do it. So uh, basically it, it, that will happen online where you will uh, choose your schools on the online uh, application that way. Uh, of course, people will be, we can help you if you have questions. Um, guidance counselors will have office hours to talk with uh, teachers, uh, talk with parents and students about it. Um, but that that's probably, that is the one thing that probably shouldn't be a problem because it was uh, a few years ago, they did move, move it to the online. So that does exist. That should be not an issue. There's a question about um, how do parents set up a student account through the NYC account? Uh, they, they have to, well, we'd have to, they'd have to have been logged in themselves. And then once you're logged in, it kind of, it, it should have their children's names listed there, or they would put in the children's information, like their date of birth and their ROSIS number. I will tell parents that um, if your child, if, so if when you registered your child in public school, say, I don't know, in kindergarten or the first grade, and you gave the full name on the birth certificate, and it might be in some instances like four different names, like the middle school. And, but, but over time, your child and you maybe started dropping some of it and it's just the first and last. If you don't put the full name in that is on the record with the DOE, it's gonna tell you that your child doesn't exist in the school system. So if, um, if your name is Harry David Johnson White, and that's when you registered, but over the course of years, you just started calling yourself Harry White. If you just put that in and you leave out uh, David and Johnson, it's not gonna register. You gotta put your child's full name in. And that's what uh, a lot of parents have contacted me. And when I look at my register, the name is, is there's, there's a middle name, even a junior. If you, if, if you stopped using the junior, if you didn't change it, you got to put that in because the system matches your OSIS number with, with that name. So you got to put the, the full registered name in. And I, if, if there is a Harry David Johnson White, then I'm sorry, I didn't mean to throw your name out there. Um, <laughs> I, I just tried to throw some uh, names together and uh, now I'm going to get a complaint from Harry David Johnson White. Why am I talking about it? <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, Harry. So yeah, um, that's, that's what you, uh, you need to do, but it should be on there. And if you have a problem, email, uh, Ms. Boone or Mr. Habibi, uh, and I'll take a look and see things too, but let us know. But it, once you're in there, you should just be able to, to do that pretty quick. How will uh, tests be given, uh, for remote students? Uh, we're actually looking at um, a, a couple of the online services we have. They do have assessments. What we're currently doing and we will do next week when the teachers come in is we really want to um, narrow it down to specific ones for the subject so teachers aren't doing different things. So there will be online assessments uh, for the students to do uh, in different ways. But we want to make sure that it's it's something that everybody agrees on using. And that's another way we can help uh, track student progress. 
remember there were no state exams last year. And I don't know if there's any state exams this year yet. So we really need to, but an assessment is an assessment. You know, um, you give one, you see where you're at. And then in a couple of weeks, you give another one and see what you did. Did you go up? Did you go down? And then we adjust instruction based on that. But we'll have something definitely. Okay, I have a parent. Um, she would like to know why is remote learning A or B when we are home and is 100% remote for five days a week? A and B is just they're they're in the, when they're not in school they're remote too. Everybody's five days a week. Everybody's five days a week. It's just that one that when they're in physically they're in school. When 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 A is not in school they're remote. When B is not in school they're remote also. Everybody's everybody does some remote. There's a question here about um, the blended, the students who are in blended learning, do they have teachers from another school or will they be from Susan B. Anthony on the days that they're doing remote? No, as of right now, that, that was one of the big things. Like I was saying, when everybody is, where's my schedule, where's this? Remember school doesn't, school wasn't supposed to start until next week, probably a yet another reason they extended it. And the big thing is we had to figure out do we need teachers? And, and, you know, and that, that was a big thing. So as of right now, other than the fact that maybe, you know, if we had a teacher that retired and we have to, you know, hire a new teacher for that or something, but as of right now, no, all the teachers that will be instructing the students are the Susan B. Anthony teachers. There's a question for the new students for online school, will they get an ID? I'm guessing like the student ID. That um, it's funny you mentioned that. I did, I did, I mean, if they're in person, yeah, we can take a picture. Mm -hmm. uh, for those remote, uh, we'd have to wait and see how we could do that. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we could, yeah, we'd have to wait and see. We definitely would have to wait and see on that uh, because you really can't give an ID without taking the person's picture there in person. I know you can send a picture, but again, that's not, you know, I mean, then I would put Tom Cruise on every one of my IDs and I'd be like, <laughs> and it'd be like, really? And I'm like, come on. Um, so yeah, we, that's something that would have to be done in person. Not seeing any more questions on my end. Okay. All right. Well, Mr. Support, I'm sorry, you were breaking I, up. I couldn't hear any of that. You want to type it? Tell Ms. Miles to email me. Ms. Yeah, Ms. Miles from SLT, just tell her to email me. Okay, yeah, that'll be easy. Okay. Um, My son doing learning, uh, are we, uh, we're learning blended. But I know that was a um, laptop or um, tablet was given out for the kids. I wonder if I could get one for my son. When he's not in class, he could have one at home to study, to do homework. OK, so you, you can go to the school website, and there's a link there to request an electronic device, OK? Oh, OK. OK. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, they're just, sorry, there was one other question that came in. Um, hi, my child is a transferee from a, another country. Um, just for the record, what are the things that I need to do or papers that I have to prepare? I don't, I think more about registration. That's a registration question. Um, that, that, was that Ms. Uh, Dyson? I yes, think. yes. Yeah, Ms. Dyson, you're okay. Uh, you're, you're enrolled and if we need anything, um, 
the Miss Monroe, the pupil accounting secretary. I'll have her contact you, but you're you're okay. I know you're worried. You're on there. She's on there. We'll be fine. And um, we'll we'll if we need something about that, uh, we we will let you know. But so far as I can see, everything's okay. Great. And then one last question is just to confirm the first day of anyone that signed up for blended learning is the 21st. For group A, yes. The 21st. For group A, you are coming to the building on the 21st. 21st. If you're in group B, you will come in the next Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. On Wednesday of that week. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Everyone again, we'll have a meeting next week uh to bring you up to speed uh you know i hope i have better news and the other thing i just want to remind everybody i know everybody's thinking ahead about what will happen in november and what you know here's what i'd like people to start thinking about i'd like to start thinking about by november we're all back in school okay i don't i don't know i need i need people to put the positive vibe out i need this i we all need to be back in school there you go thank you but i need some pixie dust Somebody's got Tinkerbell, I need something. But I, it's, let's start thinking about when we go back to school in November. Let's, let's look at it that way. I'd like it to be earlier. I get all this stuff, but I mean, I, I gotta tell you, I, I, you, a lot of your children email me and, and I know school is the best place for the kids. I mean, I, and again, we want it safe, of course. So put some energy out there that they come out with something that makes sure everybody's safe and we can go back or something like that. But this school, if ever there was a time that the education was important, it's it's now, it's right now. So mm -hmm. let's let's start thinking that like, you know, I can't wait to go back to school in November. You know, we're going back to school and, and keep that and, and block out that the negative, the, the negative uh, vibes. That's what we need. I'm gonna go see if I have a pixie dust somewhere. The only other thing I wanna add to is anyone that's watching this now who, if you know other parents or if you're a student, you have friends that go to the school, make sure that they go to the YouTube channel to rewatch these videos because all the past videos are there. So you can get these answers so you don't have to wait um, till the first day of school and make sure that everyone knows how to get to the website. So kind of help share the news with other people if they're not here tonight watching. Okay. I actually repost the, I actually repost the uh... Yes. The link, copy and post the link uh, for the parents because the questions will be coming. Um, so I will send that so they can rewatch it. Thank you. All right, everyone, once again, um, I forgot to say the date that today was August, no, September 3rd. So then, <laughs> no, September 3rd, right? Yep. Okay, again, Again, everyone, if, if we were able to answer your questions today and you and you found some satisfaction to that, then then very good. If we weren't, then uh, you know we I'll continue to work hard to get you that information. I know it's tough, but uh, in any event, thank you for coming out uh, or coming in, and um, uh, we'll I'll post another one uh, next uh, for next week. We'll do another one, and hopefully, I'll have even more information. Okay. All right, thank you everyone for joining us tonight and um, we'll talk to you soon. Have a good night. Bye everybody. Bye. Good night. Bye. Okay.